Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. You know, Pastor, in, in your message this last week, you mentioned something very interesting that caught my attention. And I wanted to get your feedback, especially as we see the church, quote unquote, in our last days, as we know the next prophetic event that's to take place is the rapture of the church. And as we're now living in times that we've never lived in before, as a pastor in all the years that you've been ministering in our church pastor, not so much our church, but the church in general, would you say that the church is losing its strength in these last days? Losing its strength. I don't think it's possible that the church ever could lose its strength because the Holy Spirit empowers the church. Mm -hmm. And so there's never going to be a time when the Holy Spirit is not empowering the church on earth. And so, no, I don't believe that the church in and of itself, the true church, the body of Christ, is losing its strength. I believe that the church, by and large, doesn't avail ourselves of the strength that has been provided for us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if there's a problem within the church today, it may be, part of that problem may be that we are not taking advantage of that which God has already supplied. You know, by quenching the Holy Spirit, uh, by, by not walking in the fullness of the Spirit, by not even being baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, by, by simply not availing ourselves, I do think that the church, um, by and large, will say the name, that the, the group of people called the church today, I, I do believe that, uh, that many of uh, those who profess to know Christ have never really uh, opened themselves up to what God wants to do. I believe that there's an awful lot of uh, people who are running around at the time who are very much uh, caught up with uh, fulfilling the, the desires of their own hearts and minds and the idea of having a, a, uh, a walk that actually impacts for the kingdom, I, I think for many people is a foreign thought, John. Mm -hmm. So um, in the last days, Jesus, was give, Jesus gives a, a series of parables that I think gives us information about these last days. In the last days, there will be uh, false teachers. There will be uh, men even amongst ourselves who will rise up, who draw disciples after themselves. There will be well-known individuals that will steer the church in the wrong direction. There will be spiritual deception that is uh, rampant in the church and uh, uh, things of that nature. So in these last days, I, I believe that God is doing a purifying in the body of Christ. And the way that happens isn't who I elect as president. Mm. The way that happens isn't whether or not I'm in favor of certain things that will protect this nation. I think that uh, as salt and light, obviously we're aware of the things that are taking place, but our hope is not in man and our hope is not in man's kingdoms. You know, uh, our hope is in the Lord who directs our footsteps because in the end, um, the hearts of man are are within the purview of, of God's spirit. You know, um, the king's heart is in the Lord's hands like rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he wills. And so even as, uh, as Nebuchadnezzar said, God is the one who rises up, raises up the, the leaders. He gives the kingdom to whomever he wills. If we would understand that and do the work of an evangelist and preach the gospel and encourage uh, people to know Jesus Christ, to vote their conscience or whatever, we might see some tran uh, transformations taking place. But again, if the church is distracted by um, current events or things that, that have taken them away from living for Christ and sharing the message and serving God and supporting ministry and we get caught up with uh with fighting vaccines or fighting whatever not to say again these aren't things that the church should be involved in of course we should but sometimes they're distracting and so i i, I think that we have not availed ourselves 
of the power of the Spirit, of the, of the uh, real direction of the Word, of the power of fellowship. Um, I think that's really what's showing right now. We were talking the other day, and I was mentioning to you, you might remember, John, how that people say, you know, though they can attend live services, they choose not to, they stay at home. They can if they want to, but they stay at home. I want to share it with you that they're saying, because we hear this, oh, it's the same thing. You know, it's the same thing. We're getting the same message, but you're not receiving the sacraments. You know, you're not being baptized or you're not receiving communion. You're not serving. You're not in fellowship. You're not in corporate prayer. You're not in corporate worship. No, what you're doing is watching other people who are. And it would be like um, you saying, well, I've been to Hawaii, when in fact you've never have. You just simply watch travel shows. And, and there is a difference between watching a show on Maui or actually being on the shore at Maui yourself. And I think what people have done, John, is they have taken that back seat to real life in the, in the spirit and have allowed themselves to think that they can be uh, watchers of other people who are walking for Christ and with Christ and all, and that's been a danger. And so getting back to your original question, do I believe that the, that the church is, um, is uh, becoming diminished? I think it's being purified. Mm -hmm. One of the things you mentioned in that distraction and the purification process as well, do you feel that Churches, some churches have done a good job of becoming entertainment, which has become a distraction that doesn't allow the church to tap into the power of the Spirit. Anytime the pastor becomes the center of everything that goes on, you have entertainment. Jesus Christ is the center of everything that goes on. But if you don't go to church because your favorite pastor isn't showing up there or he hasn't brought some special news for you, you got to show up to here, then what you've done is you have elevated that man to a position he should not be in. He should be the chief servant, not the celebrity. Mm. And so, yes, I believe that the church has become celebrity oriented, most definitely. Oh, I'll go to that church because I love their music. I'll go to that church because, oh, that pastor, he's got so much going for him. This isn't to say that we shouldn't respect or love those who minister. Of course, honor those who honor the Lord, you know, and, 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 and render honor to them, even double honor for those who handle the word. But, when we begin to celebritize people, when we make them into the most important thing, and therefore I won't show up if he's not there, that's what we've done. And so, you know, some people are more gifted and more eloquent and more articulate in the things that, that they share. And, and some people can really use, are used by God to reach our hearts in certain ways. But if you don't walk out of that church loving Jesus Christ more, if you walk out of that church service and you have anything else on your mind other than I want to serve my master. I, I've learned something about Jesus. If you walk out saying we've got to march for this or do that or whatever, mm -hmm. you, you've missed the point of, because you're, you're being you're, you're the salt that is being sent into the world. You're being taken out of the salt shaker to be the influencers for Christ's sake. And a lot of people have an easier time inviting friends to church than they than they do to to invite them to know Jesus wow. Christ. And Pastor, if if Paul, the Apostle Paul, or even Jesus himself was sitting not so much in our church, but in the church today, what would be their response? I think that if if, if the way a pastor should teach should be that if if Paul, we'll say Paul, using his epistle for example. Jesus, obviously, but we'll use Paul. That Paul could be sitting in the front row saying, that's exactly what the Spirit inspired me to say. But so many times we we add our own humor, as I am guilty of sometimes, as you know. Uh, perhaps a story that really doesn't follow the point that is being made. And what happens is we actually undermine what Paul mm -hmm. meant. And I think that that's, that's just the weaknesses of our flesh. But some people seem to do that with almost every word they say. I mean that, and I don't mean that in, in, in a way that is condemnatory. It's just a fact. There are just too many people I've seen on, uh, on, in my walk with God that 
if they were given that message in front of Paul, Paul would scratch his head and say, that has nothing to do with what I was inspired to write. You, you have not spent time studying my word, God's word. You have not studied that letter. You don't know what I'm talking about. I believe that in many churches on a Sunday morning. You get that. I, 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 I was about to tell you something I heard, John, that I won't. It, it was such a profane, and I mean it in a sexual way, profane thing that was said from the pulpit. I, I, it would happen to be broadcast, and I was looking at this guy preaching, and I listened, and it was a sexually profane thing for him to say. And you could hear people responding in a positive way. And I thought, my, my, my goodness, that that is not why someone goes to church on a Sunday. But it, so I believe that what you ought to do is preach as if you know God is listening mm -hmm. and preach as if the person who, who was inspired to write that, preach in such a way that, that they will at least know that you did your best to understand what he's saying by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Thank you so much for sharing that with us because, uh, you know, in a time where God's really pruning, it can appear to be that the church is losing strength, but as you pointed out that we can't lose strength in the power of the No, Holy the Spirit. church isn't losing strength. The church is being purified. We have the same power available to us that, that, that came to us on, on the day of Pentecost. Mm. We still have that power. It's still available. But I believe that because some of the pastors and the Christians have begun to, to follow their own hearts, the aspirations of their own visions, and their desires to have people in the pews, that they're becoming uh, the, uh, the the clowns that are entertaining the goats. Yeah. The, the Spurgeon made that clear, and I, I think he was right. Pastor, thank you so much. Uh, friends and family, I want to invite you to our Wednesday evening service as Pastor Dave has taken us through Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, we conclude tomorrow. We're just to, we're wrapping up. Yep. And then after that, uh, Titus. Titus. We'll be looking at Titus. That's going to be exciting. A pastoral so, epistle. I, I think it is. And, uh, and want to invite you guys to invite your friends and family to come join us Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We're still taking sign-ups for our Israel trip. Uh, we will uh, have all the information online regarding of what uh, the requirements may be. But come out and join us. And even come out on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. And Pastor, again, thank you so much for sharing with us. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next week.